Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining the session. My name is Deborah. I work for Innova Education. We have invited you to this session because you have um, applied to the University of Westminster. You may already hold an offer or are planning to apply uh, for maybe this September or next January 2021. Um, we have a chat section so at the end of the session you can write there your your questions and we will read them and give you an answer uh, today we have with us jane black she's regional manager from the university of westminster she will be giving a, a brief presentation and afterwards she will be taking the questions please i ask you to uh, keep your microphones in mute for now and um, and at the end, we we will answer the questions. So I'll leave you with Jane for now. Jane. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, hello, everybody. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Um, I'm going to speak to you in English, but as Deborah said, um, you're welcome to ask questions. Um, so you can put those in the chat box. Um, as you're go you can do it as we're going along, if you like, and then we'll address them all at the end. So welcome to do those in English or Spanish and Deborah will help. Um, I'm just going to say hello with my webcam on quickly um, if it works. But I think I just wanted to say hello because I think it's strange when you don't you just hear a voice. Um, I'm, as Deborah said, I'm Jane and I work at uh, the University of Westminster in London. And I often when we're allowed to travel, come out to Mexico um, and meet applicants and students um, and also our alumni who are there. So if I haven't met any of you, hopefully I will at some point soon, and hopefully in London, as you come and join us to study. Um, I'll turn the webcam off now, just because I think it might stop um, the Wi-Fi for lots of you. Um, so I'll stop that if I can. And I'll start the presentation. Um, yeah, do ask those questions. Um, oh, I've lost you, haven't I? There we yes, go. I Hopefully do. you've caught up. You're back. I think I should be. It's because I turned that webcam on. Right, I think you can see me again now. So that's great. Let me move that out of the way. So if you have got, um, if you don't know how to use it and, you've, you, and you haven't used um, the webcam, it's come back on again, sorry. So if you haven't used it before, you can just put the message in the chat. So, hopefully, oh, there we go. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay. So I'm just gonna talk you through Westminster. Some of you I think have applied, um, but some of you are just interested in looking. So it'd be great to know if you can put in your messages what subject areas you're interested in. So if you'd like to write that in now, that would be great. You can tell us what kind of subject and then I can focus what I talk about for you um, as we go along. Uh, but just to give you an overview if you don't know, um, Westminster was actually founded nearly 200 years ago now. We have been around for a long time in different forms. Um, we were established to teach Londoners professional vocational skills. So we focus very much on applied learning. That's a picture of our VC there um, that you can see. It's our new vice chancellor. Um, he's actually doing a talk next week, and I will give you the information about that at the end of the session. It'd be great if any of you are thinking about joining us this September or January, um, if you can log in and you'll hear directly from him about plans um, for the year and also a general overview of where the university um, aims to go this year and in the coming years. So we have had a lot of famous alumni. Um, and you'll see a real mix of subject areas there, which I'll go into later. Um, but we are, you know, we were the first, one of the first polytechnics in the UK, which were set up, as I say, to teach these professional applied studies. Um, and that is our focus today. And that's really what we see our unique selling point as really compared to a lot of other universities that you might be looking at and considering. So. 
you may not know some of those names, but Sir George Cayley is founder of, considered the founder of Flight. We were the first institution in the world to teach photographic sciences. Um, we have a lot of history around London and also sort of establishing the professions in the UK and looking through changes through sort of the 1900s and early 1900s. So um, talking about this already, and I think it's really important at the moment, if you're thinking about, should I be studying a programme? Am I looking at, um, maybe you're looking at a first degree, maybe you're looking at a master's and taking, interrupting your, your career at the moment. Um, it is a very uncertain time in the world but everybody is going to need to develop, progress, have new skills, be competitive in the job industry. So this is a great opportunity really to be looking at further study at the moment and thinking, where will I go? And also really, it has been a time for lots of people to reflect and think, what do I actually enjoy doing? What would I like to be doing? And what do I think is of value? Um, so when you're thinking about programmes and looking at where you would like your career to go in the future. So Westminster really does, as I say, focus on those applied studies. Um, a lot of our teaching staff are from industry, so they may be teaching you in class, but also um, in the workplace at the same time. So they're bringing those skills into the classroom when they're teaching you. That's how we like to see it. On the other side of that, you know, we are not a traditional research-led institution as such. We do have some very good research centres but our focus is more about the profession. Our courses, we get a lot of input from, from industry uh, designing the syllabus. Uh, we do look to review it and make sure that it's updated for you. So we've got some of our you know, very popular masters in marketing communications um, that has just been redesigned and redeveloped this year to reflect changes in obviously the way people are working, looking at new um, professional accreditation uh, from different industries. And we have real uh, connections with companies, both because of our location, which I'm going to talk about a bit later, but also just because of our history. Um, and we think that that's a really great thing if you're thinking about studying um, with us and thinking about, you know, what are your studies leading to you to in the future? So these, um, as well as having the teaching staff who come from industry and obviously the course design, um, it's worth looking at the professional accreditations for programmes. So we tend to focus on that quite a lot and you'll see on any of our course pages or information for the course area you're looking at, if there are specific projects um, or links with companies, opportunities for internships, all these professional accreditations, and these are some of them. They, you may not be familiar with some of them. They may not um, be something that you know is used widely for you at home, but you will find, I think, as you look into a lot of these industries, most of them are globally recognised. So when you're thinking about taking that next step and really wanting to stand out in your career, it is worth looking and being aware of these. Um, just generally, if you're looking at any programme across the UK, I would check um, the professional bodies and links. It's definitely worth doing. The other thing about Westminster really, and again, um, I'll go into a bit more detail later, is about the, the kind of community and learning environment that you're in studying with us. So we have an average size population of students for a British university, just under 20,000 students, and that's made up across both our bachelor's, our undergraduate programmes, so if you're doing your carrera, and then the master's courses, postgraduate programmes, and some research as well. Um, but of that 20,000 students that we have, we have an incredible number of students from all different countries in the world. So we're not, um, we're not, we don't have, um, students from you know large numbers from any one particular nationality but we do have a really diverse mix um, and we are actually we were rated I think in the 2018 I think the last time they did a diversity index one of the most diverse institutions in Europe as well and how that will affect you in your studies then I think really you're thinking about what kind of environment you want to be in um, we see it both um, in terms of you're going to get that real global experience, both from your peers and your classmates, and also from our academic staff. It's the outlook of the, of the university, the international outlook. And when you're thinking about your future career and life, you may want to have those global connections. As it says at the bottom of the, the slide there, um, we have a big alumni network um, across the world. 
And a lot of our graduates say one of the best things is knowing that in their field, for example, if they do media, that when they've graduated, they have got a contact, you know, in a certain country if they need a story. Um, and it is about thinking about that in the future as much as it, you may not know how far, you know, students from different nationalities, what that means to you at this stage when you're choosing a course. It also does mean we are used to teaching students from different academic backgrounds. We're very used to working with students from um, different educational environments. So um, I think it's very welcoming. Uh, it's very accessible. There are lots of different methods of teaching. Um, so maybe doing projects online. But you know, you, I think you will find generally that, especially as an international student who may have had a different learning experience, um, it's you know there's that accessibility and you'll be welcomed and be able to fit in so that's our, you know another main area to think about and then it's really about uh, Westminster community in itself and what's it like to study at the university unfortunately I'm afraid that the um, I'll send you some of these links afterwards because the videos that I would like to show you don't work on this platform um, so I'll make sure we put all those in the chat and we'll also be sharing the presentation with you at the end so you'll be able to look through them but it's really great you can look on social media these are just videos I've taken from our YouTube channel which you can find um, and you can also look at various different platforms and get a real feeling for what institutions are like and what the students say and feel and think about where they're studying um, and really with Westminster I think We'll let the students speak for themselves, but it is about that feeling. And at the moment, with all the, you know, everything that's happening in the world, with all our international students who are studying, some of them still here in the UK, but some of them have gone home because we're teaching online. It's really nice to see that mix and that community. And they've done quite a lot of um, videos on our Instagram and Facebook. Um, so have a look at those and you can see what the current international students think and are feeling. So then you've looked at the institution and you're looking at it's the right kind of community environment for you. And then it's also obviously about choosing the program. Hopefully a lot of you have know about the course and you're I don't think you've written in the chat yet, but it would be great if you can for the subject areas um, that you're hoping to come and study. Um, but we do have a very wide range of subjects. And we do cover a lot of those very applied areas so when you're looking at the course you'll look at the teaching I would look at the course leaders but also looking at the facilities the hardware the labs the studios and the equipment as well for the future when you're thinking about what kind of um, experience you will have as a student if I can I'm going to try and follow this link to show you um, while it may not be the easiest time at the moment um, in terms of making decisions and plans it is a really good way um, you know a lot of the UK universities are offering a lot more online support than they may have been uh, in the past we always try and do online information sessions every year but our course leaders have done a lot more of those uh, this spring and summer so I would recommend if you haven't already that you have a look through all of the online sessions that we've got um, they're all course specific. I'm going to try and show you them now, if this works. Um, I think you're following me. So again, we'll send this link through, but these are our upcoming information sessions. Um, so that's the one with the vice chancellor that I mentioned a few moments ago when I showed you his photo. So if you'd like to know what the university's plans are, you know, how things are going to be this year, do register for that session if you'd like. The timings are UK time, but hopefully that's all right for you for the morning. And then these are all the sessions that we've done recently. And these are all recorded and you can access them in your own time. So if you are at home and you do want to find out a bit more, you've got all these sessions. There are also virtual open days and online events that I'm going to show you. You can take a tour. You can speak directly to tutors, you can get in touch with me, you can um, connect with some of our students on social media. So you've got time, hopefully, to do the research and a lot more access to a lot of materials to find out what it's really like studying with us. So these are all of our recent ones. And then again, on our YouTube channel, there are even more, maybe slightly older presentations and sessions that we've done that would still be relevant. So do have a look at those.
Um, and then the other thing I really wanted to show you, I've seen a couple of people putting subject messaging up. So let's pick. So we've got uh, music business management, engineering. So uh, as an example, I'll go with music business management if I can. I don't know, hopefully some of you will know this, you know your courses, but if you don't and you're, for example, looking through all business programs, you click on the section and the area for your subject. But as I've been given music as a change, I'm going to go to music. We've got a new program actually starting this year as well in live music management, which you may not know about. Uh, but when you choose, uh, all of our subjects have a course page. So this is an example. And hopefully you're still with me. Um, and it will always tell you at the top when the program starts. There are going to be changes um, coming up over the next couple of weeks that I'll tell you about in a minute, but you'll be able to see there. You'll always see the price and the duration of the program. Do you remember masters in the UK are normally one year and bachelor's undergraduate programs are normally three years of study, potentially four years if you're including an internship or a work placement. So on our course pages, you might be very familiar with these. Um, we do have information here. You can see about the course modules and that's an overview. We try and keep that updated, but I don't know, a lot of people don't realise that you can actually click on this programme specification box. I will try and do it and see if it works. Um, and this is on, on each course page for each programme you're interested in. And in there, you can actually compare a full list of the modules and options that you can take as part of the programme. So if you're looking around and you're looking at different universities and you're thinking, OK, what, you know, what's the focus for me and I want to know more, look at those online information sessions, but do have a look at this because it's a really helpful document. A lot of people don't realise it's there. You're welcome to obviously get in touch and ask, ask Deborah, ask Inova as well, um, and they can talk you through it. But if you're wanting to find out now and compare programmes and think which is the right one for me, this should hope to hope, helpfully, hope, help, hope to help make your decision a little bit easier. So there's a lot you can be looking at, even if you are all stuck at home, uh, as we still are, but hopefully not for much longer. And then the next part, um, really, uh, about Westminster is obviously, as our name shows, uh, that we're in central London. Now, things are very different uh, currently in London, as they are all over the world, um, but things are getting better. And hopefully at some point during your programme, uh, whenever you choose to start, I don't know if you're looking for this September, I'll come to that in a second, um, you are obviously going to benefit from being in London. It is consistently ranked the best student city in the world. Um, we don't have the best weather, but uh, there's a lot to do and our students take the most, not just from the, um, you know, the enjoyment and the cultural activities and everything that, that there is to offer in London, but also from the fact that we are on, you know, the centre of so many businesses and headquarters and we have so many of the professional bodies near us as well as opportunities for internships, work placements. There are all the networking events um, and all the uh, guest lectures that just happen to come and speak at Westminster because we're so centrally located. Um, so it's a fantastic uh, benefit. However, um, for students who are considering starting with us in September, obviously um, we haven't fully uh, established what's going to happen yet and we're keeping everyone updated if you are an offer holder and you haven't heard anything do get in touch with me i'll give my details at the end we're starting to contact people as we make plans uh, but we're hoping to start we're starting in september and we're hoping to start um, in person when we can but for people starting in september 20 the most likely it will be initially online for most students. There's going to be a focus on getting those students who need to access the studios or labs or be in class in as soon as possible and then a staggered return. So we're keeping our students updated. I've put the link uh, there for the website. I'll just try and show it to you. Um, but we are letting everyone know as soon as we can as decisions are made. The link's not gonna work for me. Um, go to the web page and show you if I can 
and we'll stay in touch. Um, but we we are running from September, and we're telling our students as much as we can about what's happening. So you've got this page on our home page of the website that tells you everything that we're doing, and we're basically just trying to tell you what we know. Um, and be as flexible as possible and asking our students and applicants to get in touch with what they know because things are changing so quickly in different countries at the moment you know if you're finding that you are not going to finish or your grading is going to be different or the exam centers are closed don't panic just get in touch you can get in touch via and over um, and they will be updated about everything that's happening as well um, but the, we're trying to be as flexible as we can and we're trying to let you know everything we know so um, this hasn't worked very well, but I'll make sure you've got the links afterwards. But it's this page here. We've got a specific page for prospective students. So I'll just show you that and I'll send you the link. There's all kinds of information there about if you can't get your final transcripts, don't worry. If you don't know what's happening with your online English, don't worry about that. And I'm going to talk you through that as well. Um, you don't all about deposits and refunds. Um, but basically and essentially, you don't need to make any decisions yet. We will keep you informed. Um, we're starting. We understand um, as we tell students whether or not their courses are online or in person. If you do um, think, actually, I'd rather wait and start in person, then we have deferral options. So you can say, actually, no, I'd like to start next September instead. Or a lot of our programmes also have a January start anyhow. We've always offered postgraduate programmes starting in January. Um, and we are looking to offer more of those this January and potentially a couple more areas um, and a couple more levels as well. So as long as we've got your contact details after this um, webinar and you're applying with us, we'll update you about all of that. And as soon as um, courses are confirmed as running in January, they'll also be updated on our website in the next couple of weeks. So we're being very flexible. You don't need to worry um, if you've got an offer for September and you don't know what to do or you've applied for September. You can carry on and you don't need to decide until um, we have told you what the situation is with your course. Um, and then you can always contact us and say, actually, I'd like to defer to January or actually um, I'm happy to start online, but I want to know exactly you know, what the process will be for me when I can come to London, what the process will be for accommodation and visas, and we'll be able to help you through all of that. But we have to be honest, you know, every, not, nobody knows everything at the moment, so we're taking it slowly. Um, also in terms of deposits, even if you did actually think, right, I'm agreed, I'm gonna come, and then something were to happen at home and you weren't able to travel, uh, we have a clear deposit refund in place. Um, so, you know, there's lots of um, lots of ways to help you um, in this current uncertain time, not have to make final decisions at the moment. But hopefully also means that you think you can go ahead with your plans and hopefully um, you'll be with us in London sooner than you think. So uh, for students who've actually got their offers or are still thinking about applying, um, because of the situation, we did make some changes this year. So if any of you actually had um, an offer already, it might be worth just going back or getting in touch with ANOVA and just checking with us. Um, so we've changed our English language entry requirements. Um, we've lowered them slightly for most postgraduate courses. And we can check that for you if you've got a query about a specific programme. And we've got that website link there that hopefully will work for you to copy in. I won't jump around the screens too much more and risk this. Um, but we're accepting a lot of the online English programmes this year. So we're at the English exams. So we're able to accept a real range of uh, all the different exams. So, for example, something like TOEFL IBT at home, we can accept that um, if that's easier for you to do. There are a couple of other options as well. So if you're really struggling and you're a conditional offer holder and you need to find an English exam um, and it's a problem, then get in touch um, with ANOVA or with us directly and we'll see how we can help because there are a range of providers out there and, and tests that we can set up with you if you're wanting to start in September and you urgently need to take an exam. 
The next thing is that if you were, um, if you're applying now, then we're being a little bit more flexible because we realise that sometimes people aren't being able to continue their studies at university or in, co in school. Maybe you're not getting the same exam results that you would have been and you're getting um, a different kind of grading. Uh, just get in touch and let us know and we'll see what we can do. But we're trying to, you know, make those adjustments and accept students where we can and recognise that it is an exceptional time for everyone. And the other thing is that we've got our pre-sessional English programme. So the summer one's actually started um, this week and we've got a record number of students enrolled. Um, so that's great. And we will have another one. We always run a pre-sessional English programme for students to, who want to join us in January and they start the pre-sessional English course in the autumn. So in September, October time. So if you are thinking that you're going to start your course in January and you need a bit of extra English or you want something uh, to start your studies and focus while you're at home, you can. Um, it will be available to book very, very soon. Um, and it's going to be an online programme for pre-sessional for the autumn. So it's about a 10 week programme um, teaching. There is an examination. You have to reach a certain level of English um, to join the course. Um, and there's information we'll send through about that the information on our website you can look to check all the grades or you can get in touch and check if, if you would be eligible for those um, and then those that will lead into our January start which as I've mentioned before is majority postgraduate programs um, and we'll be contacting all our offer holders and applicants very soon in the coming couple of weeks um, just about as an extended course provision that we may have for January um, but if you we might already be looking if you're in social sciences, business, law, um, we already have um, those January options every year anyhow. So um, I'm going to go very quickly over the different areas because you've talked about all different subjects. Um, so I think it's important to know the campus, even if you may not be joining us immediately in person, you will be joining us and you do need to know about your studies and your facilities. Um, so I don't know how many of you have been to London before or might know, but central London's fairly small and we're very much part of the city and we have these four subject areas, uh, faculties set in the different parts of London. So I'll go through them all with you. Um, just to note, if you haven't been to London, um, it is normal. This is the tube map, the metro underground map, and it is normal that everybody uh, sort of moves around and lives on the outskirts of London and then you've got that central London um, area where the three of our main campuses are. The Harrow campus that's very near to Wembley Stadium if, if you know where that is and you can have a look. So uh, do have a look on those course pages, we'll link you through also to information about our facilities. Um, so this is our digital and creative industries campus at Harrow and this is where we teach courses such as the music business management program. And I'm just having a look to see who else has put subjects in the chat. There. So I'll have a look for you in a minute. This is where we have fashion, film, TV and media. We have a very strong postgraduate media and communications um, department and very highly ranked research in both art and design and uh, medium communications for this school and faculty and we've also um, you can go and uh, I can send through specific micro websites which will give you more information about graduates um, what kind of jobs people have gone on to do um, looking at examples of work for these practical subjects it's always great to see what kind of things the students actually produce and do so do take a look at that um, and you'll be able to see I don't think I've got anyone here for film or fashion, but if there is anyone, do put a quick message in the chat and I'll be able to send you some further details afterwards. I think we've just frozen for a moment. Oh, sorry. So uh, anybody for architecture? I think there may possibly be. Um, so within this, um, again, it's all about the facilities, the 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 professional accreditations and the teaching staff really do have a look at that. The Architects Registration Board is very near to us and we have the REBA accredited programmes for architecture. And then you can look and you can see examples of the student graduate shows and catalogues 
and the kind of employment that our graduates have gone on to get and that's really important as well as obviously looking at the access that students have to all these facilities. I don't think we've got anyone for tourism um, but you may be interested if any of you looking at looking as mentioned business there are things like conference and events uh, management tourism and business that you might want to look at as well. Sorry, this keeps jumping. So we've got our business school, always very popular. Talked a bit about things like marketing. We do a lot of um, broad pathways with specialisation. So if you're doing a bachelor's programme, you can maybe don't know at the beginning, you can start a broad year one, and then you can specialise in years two and three in things like finance or economics, business economics business accounting and entrepreneurship. We do um, also at master's level a very successful programme in innovation and entrepreneurship and we have a few new courses in this faculty starting this year. So we have a new MBA programme and that is for new graduates and it's, it doesn't require you to have a significant amount of work experience. So there's that, and we also have a new business and fintech program for anybody that's interested in that area. I can tell you more. I'm jumping through these quickly so that we don't take too long. Within our social sciences, I don't think I've had anyone mention social sciences, but we've got a lot of international relations programs. We do a lot of translation and interpreting. We do uh, psychology and a lot of law courses as well. I think I've lost, lost it. And then we've got our science and technology faculty. So anybody that's looking at biomedical sciences, nutrition, or any of the computing and computer studies and software engineering. And you can see from the images here, um, it is all about looking for when you do come and join us on, in, on campus, do look at what kind of facilities there are um, and what kind of equipment you'd have access to and be working with when you're doing your programme. So, this is just a little bit about the support um, and the support that Westminster would offer you. Um, and a lot, most of this at the beginning can also be offered for those students starting online as well. And we're looking at new innovative ways. We ran a virtual careers fair about a month or so ago, which was very successful, I understand. But we do career counselling. We have a really good creative enterprise centre, which um, I can send you the link you'll see on our social media, basically links up all of our industry contacts, our alumni who are now placed in companies and working, um, and all those links we have. Um, and they do things like residentials, they do entrepreneurship um, development. There's been some really great summer programs that you can apply to join if you're looking at, you know, learning how to be a freelancer, set up your own business. So there's a lot going on. We have a lot of student consultancy going on around the university. So there's the Westminster Business Co Consultants that if you're working in the business school, um, you're studying in the business school and you start with us, you can register with your skills and it basically works like a student run consultancy company. They'll contact you if there are projects available to do. We have similarly in things like photography, we have a um, West Photo, which is a student and staff run photo um, photography sort of consultancy agency. So lots and lots of support going on in terms of uh, career. So planning for your future and thinking about that as soon as you begin your studies, you know, what, where are you going with that next? But also, if you are looking when you, you come to be in London uh, for placements and internships while you're with us, then we can really support you with that as well. Or if you're looking to get things like volunteering, so maybe some different skills and build up some different experience uh, as part of your programme. I won't go into too much detail about that now. I realise I'm talking a lot. Um, I'm nearly that done. So um, these are just some of the employers that we work with. We've got, as mentioned before, you know, because of our location, because of our wide alumni group um, body around the world, we do have a lot of great links for students. Um, and then when you're with us, um, it's obviously not all about studies, especially if you start online this September or, with, you know, if you're feeling quite uncertain um, about things and then you're coming to join us once you start in person, we do have that support in place. So we have an international student advice team who are there to help with anything non 
non-academic so any problems we have a um, counseling and support we also um, set up um, for when you arrive and for when you'll be joining the community at the beginning some links with our current students um, to get to know people to get to find your way around how things work um, we have academic writing and additional in-sessional English support for students who need that and we'll be really focusing on that this year for students who might not have been able to take um, the same English exams or might have come in at a slightly lower level there'll be some inbuilt support for uh, for you to develop during your program do have a look at our student union that's for all the societies the sports we've got a great basketball team I only found out recently and a lot going on um, across all different kind of areas whatever you might be interested in you can always set up a society as well and it's nice to really see that other side of the university have a look at the university student union page and see what kind of activities and events are going on we have a really big foreign language centre and most students as part of their program uh, all of our undergraduate students are able to take uh, a mod an extra optional module and can do a language if they want um, if postgraduate students want to do that they're welcome to but they do need to it's an additional uh, study so you'd need to um, book on and pay for that we do evening language as well um, and then lots of things going on like our study abroad options and links and we do these Westminster working cultures visits around the world so there's lots to have a look at um, and to think about outside of the academics so you've got your the academic side and your course leaders and you'll get academic support through your studies and a personal tutor but then do think about you know especially adjustment whether it's for the online learning initially or for when you come to London about looking and thinking about that um, pastoral care and support so very quickly just to talk about fees um, hopefully if you've got your offer you'll know the fees and the costs they're just there I know a currency and exchange rates are going up and down a lot at the moment we've discussed that if you've got your offer and you don't know what you're doing yet and you're waiting to see what's happening with your course you don't need to make a decision so you don't need to pay anything yet and we do have a clear refund policy for deposits as well uh, but generally when you by the time you enroll with us whether that's in September or in January you would need to have paid half your course fee. Um, when it comes to doing your visa process and application, um, we'll talk through that then. We normally ask for a deposit, um, but I think this year, if you're coming a bit later, um, we'll, it might, we'll give you different information. Uh, but basically, everyone pays half by the time they've started their programme and you've enrolled, and then you can pay the other half at the beginning of the second semester or in three payments as outlined there so we don't do monthly payments like you may be used to but you can split up the cost in that way if any of you have applied for scholarships and are waiting for a decision the awarding is happening at the moment and you'll be contacted very soon um, if you haven't and you're looking for funding options you might want to look for our scholarships for january start uh, we have an application deadline for students wanting to start in january who've got an offer with us, you must apply and have an offer to apply for our scholarships by the middle of October. So it's normally around the 15th of October, but do check on the website. The scholarships for January will be um, announced very soon and they'll be open for application shortly. So if, if that could be an option. And the other thing that we do have as well uh, with ANOVA for some good candidates um, is a, an agent scholarship with an over education so there are some partial scholarships uh, just a couple for students looking to start their studies that have contacted and applied through an over um, so you can ask your ANOVA counsellor about those as well once you've got an offer and I've added there um, which is another link I can't show you um, the UKISA website in case you're not familiar with that and you're only just starting to look at UK study UKISA is the UK Council for International Student Advice and they've got some really great information about life in the UK a lot of updates at the moment if you're wondering what's happening um, you know and what, what's happening with travel and teaching um, and also some really good budgeting advice if you're trying to get an idea of costs and how much it will cost to live in London and to study. So we'll make sure you get that in the link. 
Um, we do have university accommodation. I can't show you this video, but I'll send it to you. But that's another thing that people always ask about. Obviously, for when you come and join us, there'll be accommodation options. And if you are looking, uh, the accommodation booking is open now. But if you haven't made a decision about what you're doing, um, it's obviously that's that's fine. Um, so are any of you have got your offer? The most important thing really to do is start to meet those conditions. So is your offer still conditional on English? If so, have a look at our English pages, look at the exams that we're accepting at the moment, get in touch um, if you think that you know you need any help or support with that. Then you can accept your offer. You can, as I say, start applying for accommodation if you want to. Um, and then as we inform you about your course and about what the options are for September, um, in the next couple of months, you can decide what you want to do. Do you want to make that deferral and join us a bit later in the, maybe in January? Or do you want to get on and start your programme and come and join us in person as soon as you're able to? Um, we'll be starting, as I say, and announcing the dates for, for, for our enrolment in September. Um, and then we will be helping students um, sort out the visas as they, if it's a staggered start to them coming to the UK to join us. So don't worry about that too much at the moment. If you are an offer holder, we'll be contacting you. Um, Innova will be there to help and support you with the visa application. I think that's really good to have, especially this year. Um, but we will support you an issue with the, the confirmation of acceptance for studies to apply for your visa at the stage where you're going to be able to come and come and study with us in the UK. And don't forget um, the really good news that the government did announce last year that there will be a post-study work route starting uh, for students who are studying in 2021. We don't have all the details still, but it is happening, we have been assured. And as soon as we've got more information about that, we will let you know. And I've just given you our visa advice page there as well. Um, but I'm sure Deborah would be happy to answer queries about that too. I think I'm going to stop there because I think we're running out of time. So I've put some links for the open day events. As I said, if you're at home, if you're stuck at home, you can go online. You can look at our virtual uh, tour at the moment when I send you these links through. We've got an event on Saturday if you want to join um, and find out a bit more and speak to some students. Uh, some of our lecturers and some of the students and I've put my contact details as well um, so you're welcome to always email me with your questions or you can send me a whatsapp um, and we can set up appointments via Innova so I think I've finished there I'll make sure you get all these links um, and I can't show you our lovely student videos um, but I'll make sure you can see those and see the student examples I'll hand over to Deborah for some questions. Thank you, Jane. So um, we already have a question here in the chat. Uh, it says, hi, I'm Mario. I applied with Innova for music business management. I believe there was an error with the response email. I got rejected because a lack of an English test at the moment, but it was scheduled for June. I will receive my TOEFL grades next week. Will there be a chance of an official unconditional offer? How long would it take? Are there working culture programs for postgraduate students? Um, so um, quick answer. Um, yes, please, could you get in touch um, either via Innova or you can send me an email um, and I can have a look into that for you. Um, that, that is something we can review and check. Once you've, um, you can get in touch now and then when you've got your English language results next week, um, obviously let me know about those as well. We'll have a look at it for you um, and see what we can do. Um, we don't have a working cultures programme for postgraduates purely because all of our master's courses are one year. And um, it is something we're hoping to be able to do in the future, um, but it's quite a short, intense period of study. And a lot of students are doing, a, they may do an internship or a placement in their holidays, especially all the business students where that's part of the, an offer of the programme. Uh, but we've got a lot of our students. So uh, we, there are various projects and opportunities for postgraduate students, um, but 
probably but not the Westminster working cultures but also for you on that program I have to say with music business management you'll be too busy doing lots of other things to have time to join the uh, WWC program okay. thank you Jane let me see oh Mario says thank you Marie. so it's good to hear because we're, we were a bit surprised about the rejection for the English language because of the English language test so let's hope you can help us with that and um, are there any other questions? Let's just give a few seconds to see if something comes in through the chat. Anyone else? I don't see any any other question coming in. I will well, I have been recording this session, so just for you to know that uh, we will be sending you the the video and we're going to be sending you some some links, uh, all the links that uh, Jane has been mentioning so that you can take a look at them. Okay, here's another question. Uh, it's Jorge. He's uh, asking, I applied for a biomedical sciences immunology master's, but I haven't got my bachelor's certificate yet. I sent a temporary certificate, carta de pasante. Can I expect a, expect a favorable response from the university? Jane, did you hear? Hello. I'm really sorry. I lost you all for a couple of moments then. I don't know if you could hear me. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Did you hear the question? Should I repeat it? Yes, please. Sorry. I lost connection for a few minutes. Okay. So it's Jorge saying that he has applied for a biomedical science immunology master's program but Great. he doesn't have his bachelor's certificate yet. So he sent a uh, carta de pasante. Okay. So, uh, do you think he can get uh, he can get an offer using this document? Um, he should, may well be able to get a conditional offer. Has he been able to include within that all the grades that he's like a grades of his subject areas? It's just that yeah. I haven't received that official document yet. I'm still waiting for it. I will surely send it once I get it. Jorge, do you have your transcript? Yes, he uploaded his transcript. Okay, great. Yeah, we should be able to make a decision um, and you'll um, just need that sort of final degree certificate um, a bit later in the summer, but we should be able to make you an offer anyhow. And we can check that for you afterwards as well. Okay, thank you. Jorge says, excellent, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll have to have a look, obviously, but we, it should be okay. We understand it's difficult, people get their final um, certificates at the moment. Yes, and some universities are closed, so now they don't issue the documents when they were supposed to, yeah. unfortunately. So, okay, I'm waiting to see if there's another question. I know Valeria is connected. She's going for an undergraduate program. So, Wally, if you have a question, please let us know in the chat. Okay, just a few seconds. If not, if there's no other question, then I will just... Um, Thank Jane for her time and for the presentation. 
Well, thank you all very much. And thank you for taking the time out to listen. I hope it's been of some use and we'll make sure you get all those links so you can have a look at the videos uh, properly yourselves and hopefully join the virtual open day. And I look forward to meeting you all in person soon. Thank you. And as soon as we have information on the program start dates, if there are going to be changes or anything, we will let you all know right away. Yeah, great. Yes, thank you, um, Deborah. Yeah, everyone, do feel free, obviously, to get in touch and check, but you'll, um, you'll be emailed uh, if, if you're an offer holder or applicant with us. Um, and also, we'll be updating our website, or you can, if you haven't heard and you're worried, then just contact um, Innova or, or me um, in the coming weeks. But we will be telling everybody. Okay. Pues muchas gracias a todos los que se conectaron. Vamos a estar en contacto con ustedes. Y este, cuídense mucho y les mandamos el video de la presentación. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Jane. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. Sí, cuídense todos y nos vemos en Londres. Bye bye.